All right, welcome to our video today on Monday, July the 13th. I'm glad you're tuning in today. Hope you've had a great weekend. I hope you had a good services um, in um, church uh, for our Hopewell people. I'm so thankful for our, uh, what we uh, experienced yesterday um, together in the church and, and uh, just a good service. And so excited now for our, our tournament this week. We are beginning today with Noah. Uh, everyone knows Noah, I think. And we will also be seeing um, Josiah, the king. Um, I, I think you'll be uh, excited what you'll learn about him today. Uh, but what I'd like to do as we begin is to update you quickly on how the, the tournament looks so far, okay? So we all know that Solomon the king uh, won uh, that video. Well, folks, I am pleased to say that Samuel, uh, this was the, the uh, number, 67%. He won officially. So he advances to the second round. It will be Samuel and Solomon. That will be an amazing video in round two. And Friday's video officially ended uh, the voting. And folks, I'm going to tell you, one of the people was in the lead until towards the very end. Some final votes changed the outcome it switched the other way. So here is those results. So our closest one yet, we see Isaac with the win, 55%. King Hezekiah, folks, had the lead and some final votes came in and turned the numbers around. So very, very exciting. And so Isaac advances to round two. He will be paired up with the winner of today's video. So let's go ahead and begin, please. We're gonna be looking at Noah. We're gonna start with Noah first. Now, <clears throat> um, I think everyone knows Noah, folks. I, I think the story of Noah and the flood may be the most famous story in the whole Bible. Uh, now, to you and I as Christians, uh, we know that uh, the most important story in the Bible, uh, I, I don't think anyone would argue, this is the resurrection of Christ and the crucifixion. But I think everyone in the whole world, even those lost, knows the story of Noah's Ark. It's so famous. So we're going to start with him today. And I would like you to know that in Noah's day, it was a very wicked time to live in. He was a godly man living in a time that was very, very wicked. People's imaginations were evil, the Bible says. Do you know Jesus even said that in the, in the last days, which we are living in, folks, that it would be like it was in Noah's day. So, folks, that should give us a clear picture of it. It was bad times. But Noah was the only man on the face of the earth that God looked down upon and had mercy on him and, and, and Noah pleased the Lord, the Bible says. So I'm going to write that up here first, that he was the only man alive that pleased God, okay? I'm going to write it like this. Um, this is exactly what the Bible says. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, folks, as God looked down from heaven and was displeased with the whole world, one man pleased him, and that was Noah. 
So if you know the story, God chose him to, to begin to build what's called the ark. Okay, the Noah's Ark, as it's called, it was a, a huge, huge boat that God told him to build. Okay, now if you add up the dates in the Bible, folks, uh, now some people disagree with the number. Uh, they interpret the numbers differently. I think, though, from what I see in the scripture, it was 120 years of building that ark. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. That uh, I'm going to write it like this, folks. I'm going to change this up. I'm going to say he successfully built the ark. Okay? Successfully built the ark. Now, please understand, Noah was not a carpenter, okay? That, he didn't know anything about building. It took 120 years, but please understand that Noah was given specific instructions by God. God told him how big it needed to be, what to make it of, everything about the ark. Noah and his sons obeyed God and made it exactly like God wanted it to be. The Bible says, though, folks, that you may say, well, why did it take so long to make the ark? Well, please understand, in the early days in the book of Genesis, people lived to be 900 or more years old. It's just what the Bible says, folks. So, but if you ask, why so long? Well, folks, the Bible says that God was being patient with the world during that time. God gave people extra time. That's exactly what God's doing today in our day. He is delaying the rapture by being patient with the lost. But um, but anyway, it took... It took 120 years, and he successfully completed building the ark. Let's see. Next up, the Bible tells us, if you go to the, um, to the New Testament, there is a scripture found, and I'm not going to read it uh, for the sake of time of our video, but if you read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible describes Noah as a preacher of righteousness. So I'm going to write that up here. He is described as a preacher of righteousness. Okay, and I'm going to write the scripture up here. That's in 2 Peter 2, verse 5. Okay, so that helps you understand, folks, why another reason why it took 120 years. Noah was building, but he was also preaching to people, trying so hard to get people to repent because God was about to judge the world by sending a worldwide flood. And he was preaching, pleading with people, but they did not listen. If you know your Bible, only eight people got on the ark. It was Noah and his family. Okay? But he was a preacher. And the last thing that I'm going to say about Noah, a lot else could be said, but the last thing I'm going to say, if you read your Bible, when he got off the ark, he built an altar, folks. When he got off that ark, remember, they were on board that boat for over one year. When they got off the ark, they saw the, the destruction of the world. They were the only people left alive. And Noah said, I'm going to build an altar. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to sacrifice to God. 
which was something they did in the Old Testament, of course. It was a way to, uh, to please the Lord. So he built an altar, folks. Here we go. This is last of all. He built an altar. And that was immediately after getting off the ark. Okay. So, folks, there we go. Uh, I, a lot more could be said, but uh, there you go. That's the overall of the story of Noah. Wonderful, wonderful man. He is ranked number four in our tournament for a reason. Okay. So, now we're going to move on to Josiah. Now, Josiah, you may not know of him, and I'm happy to introduce you to him if you don't, if you don't know him. So please understand that he was one of the kings of Israel. We've talked about that in our tournament so far. We have already seen King Solomon, King Hezekiah, and today we're seeing King Josiah. Now please understand that all the kings of Israel in the Bible were not good kings. Not just from a political standpoint, but from a religious standpoint. Some of them were evil and wicked. Um, I'm pleased to tell you Josiah was not, okay? So I'm going to write up here, first of all, that he was one of the few righteous kings. He was a righteous king. Okay. We're told about him in the Bible that, that he walked as the king in all the ways of King David, which was his ancestor. Okay. The Bible says he did not turn to the left or turn to the right from the ways of David, the king, his ancestor, okay? He was very righteous. Now, the second thing I would like to say about him, as a righteous king, as one of the greatest that Israel ever had. Uh, by the way, let me throw this in here, please. That Hezekiah, who we saw on Friday's video, Josiah is his great-grandson. How about that? This was grandpa, uh, or should I say great-grandson here, Josiah. But as a righteous king, he wanted to not just make good decisions politically, but he wanted to base everything on God. And that's the best way a leader can do it. Folks, the founders of our country, of the USA, founded our nation on God first. Remember that Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Uh, shall be added unto you. Amen. So, what did Josiah do? Well, I'm, I'm just going to word it up here that he cleaned up Israel. Amen. Uh, spiritually. I'm going to write that. Spiritually, he cleaned up Israel. Okay. Now, I must tell you something about this, okay? Now, I just mentioned that Hezekiah was his great-grandpa. Hezekiah was the king of Israel, and he did a wonderful, wonderful job. But, folks, there were two kings in between Hezekiah and Josiah, and let me just say, folks, that Israel went completely down in between the great Hezekiah king and the great Josiah king, Israel went down. 
but he spiritually cleaned up Israel. Let me name you a few of the things quickly. He, there was a false god in the Old Testament named Baal, B-A-A-L. There's a lot of worship of this false god of Baal. They even built altars to worship Baal on. Well, Josiah had many of those Baal altars destroyed out of Israel. Another thing he did was the Passover. That was the biggest celebration in all of Israel. It had just quit being celebrated. Josiah got the Passover celebrations back going, and also the famous Ark of the Covenant, as it's called, the Ark of the Covenant. It was like a treasure chest. It represented the presence of God. It had been removed out of the temple. Guess what Josiah did? He put it back in the temple, the presence of God. Amen. So he did a great job at that. Now, next of all, he, he made a decree or an order that the temple be renovated. Okay? He ordered... Uh, the temple renovation. Okay? The renovation of the temple. Folks, that word, I'm sure you know, but it means to renew the temple, to clean, uh, to make it, um, I'm trying to figure out how to describe it, to, to fix it up and to make it look nicer, to do improvements, to get the temple back looking good like it once did. And uh, there's a famous story of them finding in the back of the temple, they found what was called the Book of the Lord. Now, they believe, we believe that to be referring to the law of the Book of Leviticus. They found a copy of the Levitical law, the book of the Lord. They found it in the back of the temple. Josiah had it brought out and he based everything on that book, okay? So the renovation of the temple he had done. And the last thing that I want to tell you folks is this. Even with his wonderful leadership, God was still not pleased with much of Israel, or Judah, as it was called during that time, the, the land of Judah. God was still not pleased, even with his good leadership. God said to Josiah, I'm going to have to, have to uh, judge my people. But God said, but Josiah, you have been such a wonderful king, I'm not going to do it during your life. I'm going to let the land prosper and have peace during your time as king. But when you, when you die, I will then judge Israel. God even said why. He said, Josiah, it's because you have been tender and you have been humble. God said, I will delay my judgment because of you. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that God delayed his judgment on Israel. Okay? Or on Judah, I should say, but you know what I mean, on Israel. Okay? So God did that because of the tenderness and how humble and a wonderful king that Josiah was. So folks, I've given you these two men today. I hope you have enjoyed this. I like keeping these videos short. Noah and Josiah, who inspires you more? Please, please think about it prayerfully. Please cast your vote. And, uh, and your vote may be the one that makes one of these the winner. Okay, so I'd like to tell you that we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be moving 
to Region 3 of the tournament. And tomorrow, we have an exciting video. We're going to see Jacob and Boaz from the Book of Ruth. I hope you'll tune in tomorrow for that video. Until then, have a great day. God bless you.